good morning and it's morning still it's not early early morning again i had another bit of a lay in this morning i knew the weather wasn't gonna be that great we had rain last night and uh good morning sparrow and uh, we had a little flurry of snow this morning i'm parked in couple Keurig, and i'm literally just going for a walk this morning i know this lane i've seen it on google maps i know this country lane goes all the way up to ogwin it's eight kilometer walk if you want to walk up this lane to ogwin and i'm not sure if i'm going to walk all the way i'm not even sure i'm going to walk half the way but i am sure i'm going to go for a walk the other day i was up on Krimpiai. yesterday i was in heavy rain horrible weather and my lens is all fogged up isn't it <laughs> it's all fogged up from yesterday i was just about to say i was in horrible wet weather yesterday so please excuse the video quality because it's probably going to be fogged up for a little while um but yeah i was in horrible weather but i was trying to talk to you about the best f-stop for landscape photography in general there's no written rule between what's best if you want a shallow depth of field great if you're trying to get a sun star then you need to go for a, um, a narrow aperture so a, a bigger number like 18 20 22s and uh, so yeah there's no given right or wrong but i feel the best in general the best um aperture for landscape photography is between f8 and f11 uh, on most cameras again you might find f14 is best for your camera but in general i think f8 and f11 that gives you a good depth of field it means you can focus easily a third of the way into the frame and everything should be reasonably in focus all the way through you have a good infinity and a good generally the sharpest for your lenses i would have thought now there is a track that actually takes you up onto this mountain now i'm not going to do that i'm going to wander up here and just see where this goes and keep it on the flat keep it on the normal because i am following a river and i seem to think there might be a good image of a windy river leading up to the snow-capped mountains of trefan and um Egan and all that so they are still very much covered in snow even after the rain yesterday so yeah that's what i want to do i want to try and carry on yesterday's video and get rid of this bit of <laughs> food excuse me that i had stuck in my tooth <laughs> you know what it's like when you've got a bit of tooth a bit of something there and you're constantly constantly looking feeling it and looking at it so yeah yeah let's, let's let's have a look let's let's just see it's just going to be a gentle one let's have a little look before i go back home today two minutes after i was talking to you as i was coming along this lane i come down it's starting to come around the bend and look at this you've got this lovely pathway and because there's snow on it it's standing out and it's taking you down into the mountains so we're going to take a shot here and what i'm going to do is just on the side here there's a clump of trees i'm going to use f11 and i'll take a picture of i'm going to focus on these trees and use this leading line going down into the mountains okay then i'm going to do the same again and do f8 and i'm going to put the two images up on the screen for you just have a look see if you can see a lot of difference between the f8 and the f11 i think you'll probably find at this distance on a slightly wider angle lens you won't get a lot of difference at all and this is what i'm trying to say that between f8 and f11 you're getting that good all-round aperture to work with your landscape but i think this is going to be quite a nice little shot leading off into the moody foreboding white mountains with that horrible thick sky and the snow is coming in over my head as well at the same time so uh, well it's between snow rain and sleet it's a bit of a mixture of everything so let's get the camera out i'll take the shot i'll put them up on the screen uh, i won't get a tripod and anything out because there's plenty of light it's quite bright and i can do it all handheld with the image stabilizer on so i'll get a shot of this put it up on the screen and let me know what you think Up off the path a little bit you see the paths down there i saw this little set of rocks and i thought i wonder what it would look like if i came up higher and had a look at see if i could see the path leading down through to the mountains 
this big one in front of us is actually uh, Travan, um, but it doesn't look all sharp and pointy because you're looking at it side on. Um, and, and then I like the, um, the little bit of snow that's on these rocks just here. So I thought I'd come back up on the hill so I'm sort of up a bank looking down and then looking down onto the path again. And I thought I'd do another experiment for you. So I've taken three different focal lengths. So I've taken a wide one, taken in this big leading line with the leading line going through and then the mountains in the background. I've done it at F11 and F8. Uh, I think I've done a narrow one as well or a wide one at um, 3.6, I think it was. And then I zoomed in a bit, done the same again. And then I've done the same again. And you'll see that probably the the closer you zoom in, the narrower your depth of field will be. So your F8 and your F11 becomes more important. So you probably find that F11 will be better because you want to bring in a bit more of the background. So if you zoom in more, which compresses the image more, you want to get a bit more depth of field. So by going up with a bigger number, you know, closing your aperture down will give you that bigger uh, depth of field. So that's the plan. I'm going to put the images on and I'm sorry I can't talk to you why I'm doing it because it's fighting with the elements. It is raining and snowing and sleeting at the same time and um, bags where everything's sort of damp. It's just difficult to work with the camera. It really is. So yeah, I'm going to put these up on the screen and again, leave us some comments. Let us know what you think. Am I talking rubbish? I'm just trying to keep this simple for the simple people that have just started out and they really haven't got a clue. That's all this is about. If you've got any, any idea what you're doing, then you don't need to be listening to this. Just enjoying me rambling on and walking in the snow and getting wet. So I'm actually finding this way too easy to find photographs at the moment. Uh, look at this, great big flat plateau of rocks, but not just that, it's, it's a nice shape leading you to that tiny little white house, which is standing out in the background. And then you've got the snow-capped mountains with that big black thundery thick, don't know what field it could be, could be rain, could be snow, could be anything, clouds above it. So this is gonna make a fantastic photograph. And it also works in two um, orientations as well you can have it in a vertical so you're shooting down through the rocks a little house and the mountains and big lot of sky or you can shoot hor horizontal taking the rocks leading you through with the house and then the mountains in the sky or you can go wider and you can pick up this tree on the left hand side and a little bit of trafan having this leading wall and having like a big v so it's actually framing all of that so i'm going to take three shots again i'm going to do both exposures at f8 f11 and uh, three different sort of uh, focal lengths and pictures for you. I'm gonna put them up on the screen and I just, I'm going to focus, this time I'm gonna do two maybe. I'm gonna focus on the foreground so the background will blur out and then I'm gonna focus on the background 
and the foreground will be for, for, forward out. It won't be forward out, not in these temperatures, <laughs> but uh, it'll throw out this foreground because I don't mind my leading eye. I don't mind my eye losing focus a little bit on this. So the foreground one, I'm going to focus on the lump of rock sticking out there, and that should give me everything okay from there on in, and then a bit of this. And then I'm going to try focusing a bit more in the background and see if it blows all this out. Bit of an experiment for me as well, testing out my equipment. And um, yeah, I think it'll make three nice little images. You let me know which one you prefer. I'll put all the details up on the screen so you know which image is which and um, let's get on with it, shall we? And it goes without saying that I'm going to get a picture of this tree with the mountains behind it. But this one is definitely one for me that I'm just going to get a picture of because I think it's awesome. Little dead gnarly tree in the winter time and the mountains and the horrible sky behind it with some rocks in the foreground. So I'm going to get one of this. And this is making this video very, very difficult for me to edit. I hope you understand this because I hope you appreciate the fact that I'm taking photographs and I've got to work out which photograph is which when I get to the computer to show you and put the details up, okay? So the information's there. I just need to see where my focal points are and, and it'd be good if it actually showed where the focus points were in Lightroom, but I'm sure there's a program that tells me where it is, but yeah, I'm making this quite hard for myself. But let's get a picture of this tree because it's pretty awesome and uh, I'm getting cold now so I need to get a bit of a walk on and uh, warm up a bit. I know you're looking up my nostrils at the moment but I've got my Osmo plugged in and I can't, I haven't got a, I've only got a short charging lead. I just want to take, I've taken the advice of quite a lot of people on my Facebook group and I've actually got some leather uh, walking boots now instead of my uh, textile ones. These are a Gore-Tex boot. Um, oh my God, look at this ice. <laughs> uh, I've just got to walk across this first. So just, just bear with me a moment as I get around this without falling on one's... Oh, oh one's bottom okay we're across um yeah i just taken the advice of people saying that you know textile doesn't really hold the water back yesterday i got pretty wet and i was walking in some pretty big puddles with my spikes on my boots um which were brilliant and yeah my feet are dry inside so so far so good so yeah thanks for all those guys i knew i knew i, was, I knew it had to be leather but yeah all in all, when I put stuff out on my Facebook group and I ask for advice and things like that, it's not because I'm stupid, I don't know. It's because I want to get the bigger, wider picture. People that have used stuff, had stuff, got their own personal experiences, not that the shop tells you, because that's where you get the best advice. People that have actually used the gear. Right, I'm coming to a little bit of a hill. I'm going to see what the view's like the other side. So I was just thinking what a nice little track this would be to bring the older... Uh, Eskew e-bike over to um, I brought bring Denise over on her bike and go for a ride along here I think it'd be quite a nice track eight kilometers long takes you all the way down into Ogwin we can get a cup of coffee down there and then cycle all the way back so there's one plan for the future again we'll bring the cameras with us and this little lone tree that I'm now walking back past will become something a bit different and the mountains will look different and the sky will be different so yeah always worth coming back to have another look at a location but yeah, it's a good little track. I've just been frightened to death by a cyclist. I was just doing a little bit of B-roll, showing you a bit of a icy 
patch of rock and uh, I turn around there's a bike there Ooh, oh, <laughs> made me jump I wasn't expecting it to be there um, yeah I'm heading back to the van uh, without trying to fall over on the icy bits uh, very oh very small piggy steps and uh, I have got down to all the way down to a stile and a gate and I thought well it's just looking more muddier and the same down that end so I thought I've already taken a few shots that I think are okay to show you what I feel I'm happy with uh, hopefully they're sharp because I did realize after taking the ones of the tree that I didn't have my image stabilizer on pillock um, but never mind I'm sure it'll be okay if you do struggle with photography or you want to come out on some locations places that I may have been or let me do all the legwork and you just come and enjoy yourself then you know hook up with us give us a shout I do some workshops throughout the year one-to-ones mini group ones if you want if you've got some friends that you want to go out with uh, always works out cheaper that way if you've got two or three people and yeah we can meet up in the Peak District the Lake District here in Snowdonia and I'll show you about and if you need help, I can help you with your camera and settings and locations. And I can hear a big lot of noise. What's going on? Oh, rescue chopper. Yeah, he's flying over. Not good when you hear them out. They're probably not out on exercise today. It's probably a, it's probably a rescue. I heard yesterday talking to a guy, there was 30 people lifted off of Snowden on thursday if you aren't geared up for the gear if you don't know what you're doing don't go <laughs> i've come on an easy track because i know it's icy yesterday up clinodwin uh clinidwall sorry i had my spikes on my feet to try and avoid me slipping i knew there was people around as well so you know just please if you go out on these little expeditions on yourself please take precautions 30 people lifted off a of snowden is crazy in one afternoon and that is really bad he's flying down through the Ogwin Valley at the moment and it's looking really miserable down there I'm glad I've never gone that way can't see anything down there now so my glasses are now sliding down my nose I need my hand to push them back up because they feel really uncomfortable I feel like a teacher oh yes sir let's for English today we're going to be studying literature from I don't know whoever um yeah thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe I'm waffling because I'm on my own and I'm bored and I want someone to talk to and uh Till next time, don't know where, don't know when. In fact, I probably do know where. It's going to be somewhere, I think, in South Wales. Because I'm going to go down and see my mate Nigel. My mate Nigel, he had... Oh, I can't really say online just because I don't know who knows who doesn't know. But he's, he's been poorly. So I'm going to go down and see him. Spend a couple of days with him after Christmas. And uh, we're having Christmas at home, me and the wife and some family. And uh, yeah, there it goes. This is the week before Christmas, by the way, just if it all makes sense or adds up in your head. Ciao for now, I'll see you soon. And I am, um, I've got to go back, going to finish my coffee off and plod off home. Waffle, waffle, waffle. Yes, I know, I'm going on and on and on. Bye-bye. Ta-da, see ya.